welcome to the Cedar Lake Historical Association. I am Julie Zazada. I am the executive director here at the association. I want to thank you for coming out today and uh, welcome you to 2021 because honestly I wasn't sure we were going to make it this far to be honest with you. So really relieved to be standing in front of you today. Um, we're going to begin with a mini state of the association that will actually be summarized as well in the um, newsletters that I send home to you really soon here in the annual report. I have to start with a shout out to our members. We had a record breaking year this year with new memberships and membership renewals. In 2020, you guys, amidst the global pandemic, right? And lockdown, we lost two months of our season, but our members stepped up to sustain our operations and we wanna thank you. We appreciate you so, so very much. This really was the most challenging year that I've ever experienced here, you know, in the 13 years that I've been with the association, so thank you. Um, we were unable to host our winter social, our wine tasting in 20. 20. Shout out to the back row there for the conga light. Um, so no conga light this year, Marie, but um, maybe, maybe next year, okay, or this year I should say, 2020. Um, so then we had, a, we had a huge hit to the budget, but then everybody stepped up again with our special fundraising campaigns for the um, summer construction project, the acquisition of the Taylor Ice Truck, which you guys should have seen in October, and then the innovation fund last month. So again, thank you because all of that put together, we had a record-breaking year in terms of fundraising as well. Um, then, all of our single-day event attendance this past year for like the, the membership barbecue and things like that, record-breaking attendance. What? I'm so excited. It was a really good year in retrospect, but I'm not done. Because <laughs> it wasn't just our members who supported us this year. It was also the grant agencies. We were awarded with, you will not be surprised, a record-setting amount of support, $96,909. So exciting. So exciting. So now we're going to turn around and reward all of you in 2021 with the most amazing season you've ever experienced, I promise you. So save the date for May 7th of 2021 because that will be the 100th anniversary to the day of the opening of Lassen's Resort Hotel. So I want you to come back and we're going to have a big old party. I'm not going to spill the beans on the rest of the season and what I have in store for you, but if you are not on our mailing list, well then you got to become a member so that you get a newsletter in your mailbox or give me your email address and I can send you the electronic versions. Um, but i got to prime the pump for just one event, okay? Um, you're going to read about this in the annual report that I sent home. Over $35,000 of those grant funds are earmarked to present the most ambitious special event that we've ever attempted in the association's history. It's called Steam Through History Week. It's going to be presented July 26th through the 29th right here on our grounds. And I am going to need you. We're going to need at least 50 volunteers to pull this week off. Frankly, that is nearly eight times the number of volunteers I have right now. So do the math. I need you. Grab your family, grab your friends. We got to pull this off together. So I'm going to be here from sun up to sundown all week and probably the week in advance getting ready. You don't have to commit to that much time. But what I am going to need help with, I'm going to need staffers for the hands-on history room for the children. I'm going to need, what else? Um, escorting guests from one program to another, reception desk readers, tour guides, safety officers, uh, cafe attendants over in the um, dining room down the hall here, runners out on the grounds, a cleaning crew, or if you cannot be here but you can help contribute um, to the catering operation because all these volunteers are going to need to be fed. So if you can donate something, cook something, bake something, whatever, help me set up a really great green room for the volunteers, I would appreciate that too. So we can talk afterwards. You can let know where you might be able to help out. Um, today is our third program in the History Roadshow for this series this winter. We're going to share stories from the life of Senator Dorothy Suzanne Martin Lansky. Um, my groupies are going to remember that back in November we talked to a Beatrice Ewer Warner Castro Giovanni, our first town historian, and in December we presented on businesswoman Florence Wahlberg. Both of those presentations are on the YouTube channel, thanks to my 16-year-old who was voluntold to help me get that out of the way. And we'll also be doing that again for today's presentation. Now, coming up next after today, in February, we're going to talk about Geraldine Quartercracks. And notice that's on a Tuesday night. 
we're breaking with the Sunday tradition for that particular presentation. And then in March, we'll be talking about Dr. Robert That's King, right. father of Cedar Lake. But <laughs> who asked me about the t-shirts, right? Got to talk about my swag here because I talk about a t-shirt every time when I do these presentations. So, so today I'm wearing a Cedar Lake roller rink t-shirt, also, also, also known as Welton's New Crescent Roller Rink. So I have some of these in large and extra large in the lovely maroon, as well as in our navy color. I still have some Taylor Ice Truck t-shirts available. I've got Cedar Lake History books. I've got Dancing Under the Stars posters. Bottom line, the gift, gift shop is open today, and you should see me after the presentation if there's anything that you would like to purchase, okay? Now, thank you for coming out today. On a morning that started out to be kind of snowy, I was a little bit nervous, and I said, we're doing this no matter what. So thank you for coming out and coming to the warm conference room um, so we can have this little presentation. I'm going to begin with a little bit of a prelude. We're going to talk about Sue's parents first, because in the midst of researching her biography, I learned a lot about her parents and things that I kind of knew but had not really connected the dots. So we want to share that with you, too. Sue's parents were William Gerald Martin and Dorothy Marie Drews. Bill was born on August 10, 1912 in Yorkville, Illinois, and Dorothy was born on August 8, 1914. She grew up in southern Illinois. They met in Chicago, presumably when she had moved up there to work, possibly as a nanny or as a cook. Um, at times, Sue's cousin explained that Martin held jobs as a window washer and a driver for a prominent Chicago reporter. And um, as our historian Scott explains, I finally found the marriage date. Sorry, I said Martin, I meant Bill. Um, as our historian Scott explains, I finally found the marriage date. It took a little bit of time because in some of the records, Bill was listed as William Selhorst. His father's name is Charles Selhorst, and his mother's name was listed as Nora Martin. So I don't know if any of the family members know the backstory on that, but we can talk about that after the presentation. Um, and then her, the Williams death certificate does say Honora Madeline Selhorst was his mom's name. So Dorothy's parents were Frank Drewis and Minnie Shackman. And Dorothy and Bill were married in only Illinois in Richland County, where Dorothy grew up, on Monday, May 3rd, 1937. Bill's occupation was listed in the marriage record as an employee of a window cleaning company in Evanston, Illinois. And a church was not listed, but a pastor by the name of August Honeywinkle is the one who married. Their oldest child, Dorothy Suzanne Martin, was born on September 3rd, 1937. And on August 18th, 1941, the young family added their first son, William. There are a lot of Williams and Dorothys in my presentation today. Good luck keeping track of all of them. I'm, I'm like, right now I'm talking about Bill and Dorothy, Sue's parents, and then we'll talk about Sue and Bill Lancey. So, um, Bill, let's see here, Bill was able to avoid being drafted for World War II because he was married with children. He found a job with Inland Steel in the winter of 1941-1942, which further exempted him from needing to leave for war. He commuted daily that first winter along Lakeshore Drive from Evanston, and that was enough. The family, was, you know, we don't need to be worrying about this anymore. So the Martin family was looking for land, and they ended up settling at the south end of Cedar Lake, in a little four-room cottage on Lane A in what we now call South Shore Subdivision that was built in 1900 according to the tax records. So that top picture is a picture of, I believe, what the property looked like when um, Dorothy sold it. And the bottom picture is what it looks like today. And then there's a little um, floor plan from the tax records. I still, four-room four -room cottage raising five children plus the two adults. So the story goes according to Cousin Pat. Um, somewhere along the way they need some more space, so Bill and his brother-in-law lifted the cottage and dug out a basement. And I like that ingenuity. I could use some of that around here at the museum. So if anybody else is interested in getting, getting very busy like that, we could, we could sure use you here at the museum. So, so really, um, Special to know that the family was here in Cedar Lake the entire time, raising their family. And Bill and Dorothy were an amazing couple. This is um, one of the pictures that I have of them. So they're in that little gold circle there. And then the, this is Sue right here in the bottom of the picture. Um, 
They were instrumental in the organization and the founding of our association. In fact, Dorothy's daughter remembers her mother scrubbing the museum porch floors and baking pies for the annual pie and ice cream social. And her granddaughter remembers gardening here with her. Bill passed away November 26, 1987. He's buried right here in Holy Name Cemetery. And Sue wrote this about her father on June 18th of 2006. She says, my father, Bill Martin, was always encouraged me to accept challenges set goals, and to do the best I could to accomplish them. He served as a constable in the late 40s and early 50s, and both of my parents were very involved in and worked tirelessly for our church and other community activities. I can't remember a time that he ever said that he would not help with any project, whether it was helping to establish and raise money to purchase the first safety patrol boat on Cedar Lake or organize the historical association. Working to improve our town was one of his priorities, that is the legacy that my dad left to me. So those were Sue's words from a Post Tribune article, again, that she had written in 2006. And I want to read a little bit about Dorothy, too. This comes from her obituary. So Dorothy Marie Martin, he drew us, age 87, passed away at her residence in Cedar Lake on Thursday, April 25th of 2002. She was born on August 8th, 1914, the daughter of Frank and Minnie Drews. She was preceded in death by her beloved husband, William G. Martin, her brother, William, two sisters, Carrie and Frida, and she's survived by three daughters, Senator Sue Lansky, Jude Stoll, and Margaret Oman, and two sons, William Martin and Richard Martin, 17 grandchildren, 14 great-grandchildren, and one brother, Alfred Drews of Olney, Illinois, and two sisters, Irma, uh, it says two sisters, Irma, but then it only lists Irma as, as the one sister. Um, so Dorothy was an active member of Holy Name of Jesus Catholic Church for over 50 years, serving as both an usher and Eucharistic minister, and was a member and past president of the Altar and Rosary Society. She had a deep love for her country and volunteered in numerous civic organizations, including the Cedar Lake American Legion, Post 261 Auxiliary, the Cedar Lake VFW Auxiliary, as both uh, looks like chaplain and secretary, the Cedar Lake Chamber of Commerce, the Cedar Lake Historical Association, where she was a charter member, the Lake County Republican Committee, the Association for Republican Women, charter member of the Cedar Lake Civic Club, the Cedar Lake Knights of Columbus, the Patrol Board Association, a member and secretary of the South Shore Subdivision Improvement Association, the Pi Epsilon Kappa, Sor Kappa Sorority, the Hanover Home Economics Club, the Cedar Lake Teenagers, and was a leader of the 4-H Club. In 1968, she received the Oscar Anderson Award and was named Cedar Lake Citizen of the Year in 1988. She received the Hometown Award in 1991 and was singled out as someone you should know in a Times newspaper article in 1998, where she was quoted as saying, live truthfully and always be honest. She was an avid gardener and a great cook who will long be remembered for the hundreds of pies, especially apple pies, that she baked for civic and church functions. And Dorothy is also buried at Holy Name Cemetery. So I think it's pretty evident where Sue gets it from. And I thought it was really special to be able to share a little bit of history about her parents, because that really is going to inform a lot of what you hear about Sue today. And we don't know too much about Sue's childhood. Um, I believe she would have attended Holy Name Church School. Um, in, it's listed as in Cook, which if you remember from our presentations a couple of years ago, the villages uh, around Cedar Lake before we were incorporated, you had Cook and Hanover and Paisley and all of that. So Holy Name is, is still here in Cedar Lake, just called Cook. Um, and her sisters also shared that they remember her being a campfire, campfire girl with Mrs. Pahadis, and that would have been over at La Tulip Harbor, which is now Pinecrest Marina. Um, she attended Bishop Knoll High School from 1951 to 1955. So these are the pictures that were pulled from the yearbook, the online yearbook. Um, freshman year is the top corner up here. Sophomore year, and then this is a family photo. So we got the glasses off in the yearbook photo, glasses on in some photo that was sent to the family. That's a picture of her from one of the little club pictures. And then this is her junior year picture. So those came from the... Um, for the digitized yearbooks. Her cousin Pat tells the story of how Sue would take an old converted Greyhound bus for about a one hour commute every day to school. And then if she needed to stay after school for any reason, she would have to catch a bus to downtown Hammond where she could catch another Greyhound bus to get back down to Cedar Lake. Oh, so it was a real effort. It was a real effort to get up there to get up to school. And then this from Sue's um, senior yearbook summary up there on the top. So 
Yeah, there's a family photo from the senior yearbook picture. Um, from her yearbook photo and bio, we learned that there were many activities from high school that likely paved the way for her civic and business activities. And I want to read some of the details of these clubs that she was in. So you can see up there it says she was part of the Bi Phi Chem Club. That was her sophomore year. That was an honorary scholastic club where you had to have a minimum average of a B in any of those three science classes. And that club held monthly meetings at which one of the three divisions would present a scientific demonstration of interest to all members. So it's my Phi Chem. Then she was a member in her junior year and senior year of the Tri Opus Club, which was an honorary society of students who maintain a minimum grade average of a B in the commercial subjects of shorthand, bookkeeping, and typing. At their regular meetings, the members are provided with demonstrations, films, and talks relating to various aspects and problems of the business world. During its 15 years of existence at Ohio, the Triopus has given its future businessmen and women, secretaries and stenographers, a Christian outlook of life for the business world and has promoted a greater interest and excellence in the commercial curriculum. Uh, sophomore year, she was in the Prop and Publicity Club, which was responsible for the success and publicity of the plays, dances and music programs and the other activities at the, um, at the high school campus. She was also a member of the SDS Club, it says here that the SDS club has become, and that was senior year, become one of the biggest and most popular clubs at Knoll High School. It was started three years ago with a membership of 11 girls and now has a membership of over 300. The primary purpose of the SDS club is to demand that designers and fashion retailers produce and buy such clothes as are in accordance with the principles advanced by the Holy Father in his encyclical Casti Canubi. In that encyclical, His Holiness stresses the importance of modesty and feminine clothes, which are at the same time modern and attractive. Included in the club calendar are a series of dances in order to build up a scholarship fund. Style shows and programs are presented for Knoll students and various social organizations at which attractive and modest fashions are modeled and interesting talks on the phases and implications of modesty and dress are given. Which is going to totally channel right into what we talk about with Sue and her dress shop in a couple of minutes. So the SDS club she participated in senior year. In junior year, she was a member of the CSMC, which is the Catholic Students Mission Crusade. And that was a program of devotion, study, and apostolicity. And they encouraged their members, along with the entire student body, to develop a deep love and concern for the peoples of less fortunate lands. So they would do mission collections, taken up weekly, and other projects that were arranged to raise money for support both locally and afar to support missions. And they also had study clubs that were helping to share the different opportunities that were available. So again, aren't you like sensing a theme that I'm about to touch upon with Sue's personality? Um, she was also a member senior of the Booster Club, which that was limited to seniors. That was the most spirited and active organization at Knoll High. And its aim was well accomplished to build and maintain school spirit and interest in supporting the school teams. And in junior year, she was also a member of the school newspaper, The Warrior. Um, publication of that paper was assumed by the junior class at the beginning of the second semester, so she became involved in that as well. So it sounds like she was riding that great second Greyhound bus, you know, over to Hammond and back home, probably a lot throughout <laughs> high school, because she was a very involved um, high school student. And then those pictures there that I have, um, one of them, this top one, was taken in Arlington outside of one of the museums. The bottom one, it says, was taken on a ship, same trip, in 54. Um, and then that's a graduation photo on the far right. And then this is a picture of the Booster Club. So that's her right there, all bundled up in her little winter jacket. So I thought, oh, that's cute. I have to share that one. But awfully stylish, right, for, for Sue, as we're going to talk about as well, like I said, the theme of her, of her life, it seems. Um, she attended St. Joseph College, which is now known as Calumet College of St. Joseph, Indiana University, and graduate school at the University of Chicago. So back when she attended St. Joe's, it was just a subsidiary of St. Joe's of Rensselaer, and they actually had classrooms that were borrowed from Bishop Knoll and also St. John the Baptist Catholic Church in Whiting. So really modest beginnings for that, that, you know, that college that she, while she was there. And then while she was attending St. Joe's College, she also taught second grade at Holy Name and her sister Judy was in her class. And Judy recalls that she would be chastised back at home for calling her sister Sue during the school day instead of Miss Mark. <laughs> <laughs> during the uh, 1950s and 60s, 
60s, boat and ski clubs were really popular at Cedar Lake, and one of them was the Capri Boat and Ski Club that was headquartered at the South End at Coffin Shady Beach from 1953 to 1958. People from Illinois communities like Harvey and Tinley Park in Chicago came here, including William Lansky, and that was how he met Sue. We had a water ski club out here, and that's how I met my wife. I spent a lot of time swimming at the lake in the summertime and, and being at South Shore. And, and how I met her, she worked for Adolph's. Was a drive-in. Edgewater Beach. That, uh, mm -hmm. that had a little pier, you'd have to buy ice cream or a hamburger and you'd get a pass to go across the street and uh, go swimming from the pier. So I thought it was really special. That came from the, I think it's called Greetings from Cedar Lake. It was a, a documentary that talked, uh, right before the Lighthouse Restaurant opened up, talked about the history of Cedar Lake. And they were interviewed extensively for that. So I have one other clip that I'll show you, but um, it's a really neat to be able to hear her voice and to be able to hear from her the story. So I enjoyed that. I wanted to include that for you. Um, so that's a picture of them at the Capri Ski Club at the south end of the lake. And then here are several other pictures taken, I'm told, by Bill, these pictures of Sue um, at, at Coffins as well. And I mean, they were a really stunning couple, absolutely stunning couple. Um, I don't know where that photograph is from, if that was at a wedding or party or something like that. Um, he's dressed in a, in a tux, but she does not appear to, you know, it's not that it's a wedding or anything. Is that Harvey's wedding? I don't know. And then over here on the bottom as well, a little picture, I post me on vacation or something like that, I'm not sure. And then down here, we have um, Sue's engagement announcement, so let me read that to you. Um, this by June of 1956, her parents had announced her engagement. It says, Miss Suzanne Martin's engagement to William Lansky is being announced by her parents, Mr. and Mrs. William G. Martin of Cedar Lake. Her fiancé, the son of Mr. and Mrs. Steve Lansky of Chicago, is a graduate of Tilden Technical High School and is employed by Continental Can Company in Chicago. Miss Martin, a graduate of Bishop Knoll High School, is employed by Illinois Bell Telephone Company in Gary. Wedding plans are indefinite, but as we know, not for long. Just shy of her 20th birthday, Sue and William were married on June 1st, 1957 at Holy Name Church, again in the village of Cook, now part of Cedar Lake. And they, let's see, this is a picture of them on Lewis Avenue, which was their first home, which was apparently just like one street south of here. And this is a picture that was taken at Club Waikiki, which was a restaurant in Chicago. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I do have three little articles and advertisements from there. It sounds like a really cool place, okay? Hawaiian dancing and all that. Um, so anyway, that's what that photograph is from. They were out to dinner one night, and I'm not sure where that one came from. But again, what a stunning beautiful people. Um, Sue and Bill raised five children here in Cedar Lake. Catherine, Jacqueline, Pamela, Cheryl, and Eric. They were born in the seven year span between 1958 and 1965. And I had even learned that Pam was born during a late March snowstorm. Bill was working up at Sherwin Williams at the time, so Sue had to call her dad to get a ride to the hospital, but Pam was delivered at a hospital. So. Sue's children and sisters have shared that she was a wonderful homemaker. Her hobbies included cooking, gardening, painting, sewing, knitting. She was a family archivist. She had kept a lot of her records for the family. She was always well dressed, which again is maybe going back to that high school club perhaps, that she first got that sense. And um, then she had beautiful handwriting. And as the oldest of five children, her sister said, she was a natural leader. After the children were born, she put those sewing skills and fashion sense to work as a seamstress. She operated Sue's Bridal Shop from 1967 to 1975 in a building adjacent to the family home. And her daughters recalled the family's camping vacations of their youth. She's, uh, I think Jackie had said they had the best family vacations. Getting ready wasn't always fun, but they were always adventurous times and they included destinations like Colorado and Canada. So this was not just going up to the dunes or something. The station wagon was packed up, the boat was hitched, the tents, the screening house, the whole nine yards. 
And then they would stop at every historical marker that they came upon on these trips. Sue used to call them hysterical markers. Um, and they would have to take a picture at all of them. And she tells me one story of one where Bill was holding their son like upside down or something like that. And the kids' faces are, you know, different, different um, expressions of angst, I guess. <laughs> so, so she couldn't find one of those in time for the presentation, but did find this picture. And I think that the name of that um, boat is the Good Ship Lollipop. I can't read behind you, it's a little head there, but it says the Ship Lollipop. So. Um, once they were at the campsite, Sue would cook on the campfire, they would go fishing, Bill would take the um, sailboat out at night and put a light on the end of the boom, so she, they were really, really special times. And daughter Jackie explains that all of the girls ended up moving away from Sea Lake before they were even married to places like California, Oregon, Bremen, Germany, Ansbach, Germany, Samoa, France, Oahu, Hawaii, Fort Hood, Texas, Washington State, Louisiana, Virginia. The list really goes on. A lot of those were military moves. I think three of the girls had um, married into the mil military families. So both mom and dad visited them, though, in all of those places. So the, the family vacations, I guess, continued in a way as well. And as we touched upon, Sue really developed a strong work ethic from her parents. Um, this picture, I would assume, was taken at their 50th anniversary because she's got the gold flowers there. Am I correct, family members? Okay. So that would have been approximately May of 1987. And Jackie was saying that Sue really instilled in her children that strong work ethic that she inherited from her parents. She, her mom, Jackie said her mom really inspired her to start her own business as an adult. Sue was a hard worker, and she was a good speaker, very engaging, very natural in her delivery. And she also had a senator's voice. So what Jackie meant by that, she's like, you know, the house would be absolute chaos. And the kids are screaming everywhere, but that phone would ring, and she would be able to transition into Senator Lansky, you know, Senator, I mean, Sue Lansky, you know, she'd be able to just snap right out of it, of it all the chaos. And any mother, I have a mom of five too, so any mother of five would know how to do that, right? But that played well into her political career then. So Sue first started in politics in the 1960s at Cedar Lake. During the incorporation of Cedar Lake, she worked on the survey that helped make Cedar Lake a town. She served as the Cedar Lake Deputy Clerk Treasurer, under Clerk Treasurer Geraldine Quartercrax in the 60s and 70s. And then when Geraldine decided not to run for re-election, Sue um, had a chance to run for Cedar Lake Clerk Treasurer in 1975. She was defeated by her uh, Democratic opponent, Cleta Walker, in the November election. Now, around that time, too, as noted, uh, so around 75, Sue had already been operating the Brano shop for six years, and she was serving her second term as president of the Cedar Lake Junior Women's Club. She and her husband, Bill, also were active in school organizations. They were members of Holy Name Church. She served as the Center Township Deputy Assessor under Oliver H. Cooper and was elected Center Township Assessor in 1978. She also served as Republican Vice Chair for Lake County from 1978 to 89 and then again 2001 to 2007. And her business acumen was still very sharp during all these years too. American Dream Realty began in, I forgot what year, I don't have the year written on here, but when it began, um, it had an all-woman real estate team and Sue was somehow a member of that team as well, helping get them started. She was also a member and board member of Tech Federal Credit Union, served on the board of directors for the WYIN television station in South Lake YMCA. She and Bill were the owners of All Golf Car Incorporated here in town. And for all of these reasons put together, in 1985, Sue was named Business and Professional Woman's Woman of the Year, and in 2000, a Small Business Champion. In 1984 was when she decided to run for the Indiana Senate. Many of the reasons that she ran included government spending, increased taxes, having an honestly balanced budget, tax relief, high prices of health care, and renewable energy. She represented the 6th District, that includes Southern Lake and Newton, Benton and Jasper counties and served for 30 years from 1984 to 2014. She also served as assistant president pro tem in the Indiana Senate and for her service as a senator she received the outstanding representative senator award in 1985, the Lake County representative of the year in 1988, she was also awarded Sagmore of the Wabash, which is a state award, three times, first in 1980, then again in 1983, and then posthumously in 2015. As a Republican senator, Sue helped to author and sponsor and co-sponsor a variety of Indiana laws, 
One of her earliest works was an amendment into the Lemon Law, which protected car buyers against defective vehicles, and that was in February of 1988. She had concerns for veterans. In 2009, she authored a bill to offer Hoosier veterans, Hoosier Purple Heart recipients, free tuition to state colleges and universities. And she also fought for the rights of women in Indiana. In 1992, Governor Evan Bayh established the Indiana Commission for Women to assist the needs of Indiana women and their families and to work strategically for systematic change in the way the state, communities, and political, economic, and educational spheres interact with them. The commission addresses various issues, including the economic status of women in Indiana, equal pay, and sexual assault. He appointed Sue to that commission in 1993. And she, Sue is being quoted as saying, she saw that there was no glass ceiling for women in politics, and if there was, she was just too busy plowing along to notice it. In 2011, she authored legislation to promote women entering the engineering field and establishing Indiana's National Engineers Week. And the legislation also began the annual Introduce a Girl to Engineering Day as a way to encourage more Hoosier women to get involved in engineering. Sue also had concern for the environment, more specifically our beloved Cedar Lake. In 1989, the Indiana State Budget Committee approved funding that allowed the Indiana Department of Natural Resources to purchase the Cedar Lake Marsh. $300,000 was earmarked for the acquisition and preservation of many quality wetland areas in the state. Lansky said that the purchase of Cedar Lake Marsh deserves serious consideration by the state and was a key component of the lake enhancement project. In that same year, Senator Lansky acquired a $300,000 Build Indiana grant for the Cedar Lake Enhancement Association. Then in the following year, because of her efforts, $152,000 was awarded from the state and another $200,000 was given was to be given to Cedar Lake from the Build Indiana funds. Later in 2007, through the efforts of Senator Lansky and Representative Bob Kuzman, more funding was placed in the next state of Indiana biennial budget to put towards Cedar Lake Aquatic Ecosystem Restoration Project, which as you guys know is, is ongoing right now. And in addition, in 2008, the detailed public review of the Ecosystem Restoration Project was funded through state money obtained by Representative Pete Visklosky, Pete Visklosky and Sue Lansky. So the plaque, in the photograph, which you can see it right out here on the shoreline, um, that says, Cedar Lake Enhancement Association, Clean Water for Our Future. With thanks and appreciation to Senator Sue Lansky, State Representative Tim Fesco, the Build Indiana Fund, and the Cedar Lake Enhancement Association, who shared a vision for the revitalization of the Cedar Lake Park of the Red Cedars and who persevered to realize this dream, dedicated July 2nd, 1999. So I believe that that whole project was to get this break wall installed and redo the grounds out here. Um, so that is what that plaque is in reference to and where all that funding that she secured was, was able to be used. And then there's, that's my handshake slide. Right? She's got her <laughs> with all the different editors. This was at a committee meeting, I believe, taken in 1996. That's her senator's face, I think, right? Mm -hmm. She's at work right there. Everyone that, everyone, okay, I, I did about three hours worth of interviews. I interviewed about six or seven people. Everyone that interviewed shared how very community-minded Sue was and so very thoughtful. She was always pleasant, always a lady. She cared very, very deeply, and her cousin, who grew up with her just like a sister, says she doesn't ever recall hearing a negative comment made about Sue. Real testament to her character. So these shots here were taken from her 2010 re-election campaign. So she used to judge the car shows here at the Summerfest. This is visiting some constituents, and uh, both of those pictures visiting different constituents. And I forgot to ask her daughter um, what the story was behind her in the in the race car. Does anyone know? Anyone recognize those pictures? I got the five drive. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know it's an Indy, but I just wasn't sure what the context of the photographs were. But thought, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that was neat. 
So she also sponsored pages from our district regularly, and she would have newspaper articles clipped about children who may be on a roll recognition, and then send those to her constituent families. She would help citizens with letters of recommendations, or filling out any paperwork, and conscientiously always listening to their concerns to see how she could help. So that one picture up there on the top came from a newspaper article that I found that says, Senator Lansky surprises fourth grader. Uh, this is from the South Newton Elementary School. State Senator Sue Lansky made a last minute visit to South Newton Elementary on Wednesday to meet with fourth grader Kim Hall, who had sent a letter with an interesting proposal for a bill. After being handed the letter that morning in Indianapolis, Lansky decided to drop by on her way to Cedar Lake to talk to the young lady who had sent it to her. Hall asked Lansky to consider a bill to extend the school day from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. to allow students more time to get all their work done. In her letter, she writes in very neat penmanship, we can never get everything done. Some kids are working really hard and still can't finish. So Sue ends up telling her that she would take her suggestion before the Senate. So that, I thought, was also a really special picture in showing that, that connection that she had with her constituents. And to take the time out of her day to do that was very special sentiment. All right, picture family members. Was that that would have been their 50th anniversary family photo? Do we know? I forgot to, again to ask her yes. daughter the occasion of that picture. Um, so in 2013, Sue was diagnosed with lung cancer. And she said that she was going to begin treatments immediately at the Rush uh, University Medical Center and she would continue to serve the doctors and she were confident that she was going to make a full recovery and she would serve, serve us Hoosiers as long as she was healthy enough to do so. But by January of 2014 she had to announce that she was going to retire at the end of the year. So this photograph was taken at her retirement party uh, with Representative Skowski. And I want to read the, um, the um, statement that he had put into the congressional record. It kind of summarizes some of the things that I was talking about, but also again about her character and the things that he said about her. So he um, starts by beginning, it says, it is with tremendous gratitude and the highest respect that I take this time to honor a dear friend and one of Indiana's finest citizens, the Honorable Sue Lasky, Indiana State Senator. During her many years of public service and because of her countless efforts toward improving the lives of her fellow Hoosiers, Sue has left an indelible mark as an outstanding public servant, and for this, she is to be commended. Senator Lansky will be retiring at the end of this year. Sue Lansky pursued her education at St. Joseph's College and Indiana University, followed by graduate studies at the University of Chicago. In the years to follow, Sue, through hard work and a spirit for public service, was elected Center Township Assessor in 1978. She was also elected Lake County Republican Vice Chair the same year and maintained that position until 1989 and then again from 2001 to 2007. Senator Lansky was first elected to the Indiana Legislature in 1984 and has selflessly represented the people of Indiana Senate District 6 for the last 30 years. Throughout her tenure as state senator, Sue has consistently fought for the rights of the residents of her district and throughout Indiana. In particular, Senator Lansky's legislative achievements include authoring Indiana's Lemon Law, which guards Hoosiers against the sale of defective vehicles, creating living will legislation which gives Indiana residents better control over their future medical decisions, and spearheading the passage of a bill requiring all Indiana nursing homes to have fire sprinklers throughout their facilities and smoke detectors in every patient's room. Senator Lansky's record speaks for itself. She has passionately devoted herself to improving the lives of Hoosiers and to protecting the interests and well-being of Indiana's most vulnerable citizens, the lives the most vulnerable citizens. Highlighting her leadership in Northwest Indiana and the Indiana General Assembly, Sue has distinguished herself by serving as the Assistant Pro Tem in the Indiana State Senate. She has also served on numerous legislative committees, including the Tax and Fiscal Policy Committee, as a ranking member of the Civil Law Committee, and as chair of the Elections Committee. Along with her career as a state senator, she was also named an honorary colonel in the Indiana National Guard and president owner of All Golf Car Incorporated. Senator Lansky's exemplary service has been rightfully recognized numerous times during her legislative career. And like I had mentioned, in both 1980 and 83, she was honored with the prestigious Sagamore of the Wabash Award for her service to the people of Indiana. Following this honor, Sue was awarded the title of Outstanding Republican Senator, as well as the Accolade of Business and Professional Woman of the Year, and recognized as Lake County Republican of the Year in 1988, the JC Citizen of the Year in 1991, and Small Business Champion in 2000 by the National Federation of Independent Businesses. 
Sarah Lansky's remarkable career is exceeded only by her devotion to her amazing family. Sue and her loving husband of 57 years, Bill, have five children and seven grandchildren. I've been truly fortunate to call Sue Lansky my friend. Throughout the years, she has been an outstanding advocate for the community of Northwest Indiana, as well as for all Hoosiers. She epitomizes what it means to be a public servant, and for her selfless, lifelong commitment to the people of Indiana, she is worthy of highest praise. Mr. Speaker, I respectfully ask that you and my other distinguished colleagues join me in honoring Indiana State Senator Sue Lansky for her lifetime of leadership and exceptional service to the people of Northwest Indiana and throughout the state. Senator Lansky's impact will be evident for generations to come, and she serves as an inspiration to us all. In December of 2014, the South Shore Convention and Visitors Authority also gave Senator Lansky the 2014 Chester F. Dobis Public Service and Hospitality Award for her contributions to tourism in our region. And then once her term ended, Senator Rick Niemeyer of Lowell succeeded her in the Indiana Senate. This slide. I'm going to show you that picture on the bottom corner there. Um, Dorothy Suzanne Sue Martin Lansky died on February 27 of 2015. Flags were placed at half staff in honor of her memory. And um, on November 14th of 2015, Cedar Lake renamed uh, Park to honor her. So that's that picture at the bottom corner there. Um, I'll read you the article. Former State Senator Sue Lansky accomplished much for Cedar Lake, and the town Saturday made sure her commitment to the community won't be forgotten. Town leaders dedicated a park in honor of Lansky, who died in February. The Senator Sue Lansky Memorial Park is located on Lake Shore Drive near Klein Avenue. Park was normally, formerly known as North Park. The council in August decided to rename it in honor of Lansky. Every time you come here, enjoy it, Council President Randy Neumeyer said during the dedication ceremony. Think of Sue. Lansky was remembered Saturday for her many contributions to the area and her leadership. Neymar said Lansky's le legacy has been stamped on this community forever. In addition to dedicating the park, Neymar announced Governor Mike Pence had selected Lansky to receive another Sagamore of the Wabash Award, and Bill, her husband, had accepted the award on her behalf at the time. Bill had said that um, that was her third award. His wife had numerous jobs through her throughout her life, the first being a newspaper delivery person, which we didn't hear about that earlier. And Councilman Robert Carnahan said that while Senator Sue Lansky was raising her children, she had operated Sue's Bridal Shop, he said she was always a community activist, always had the community's interests at heart, and she will be greatly missed. There are more quotes that I want to read that talk about her character from um, different um, newspaper articles as well as a couple of comments left um, from her obituary. So I want to share those with you. Um, I, can't, I don't remember who this particular one came from, but it talked about Sue's look. It says, a flash of the eyes or a steady gaze on her lowered eyelids. The look was often reserved for people who misunderstood her or underestimated her. <laughs> Inside that velvet glove was a steel fist, a Lake County steel fist. Those who tried to mislead Lansky got the look, and they often ended up get regretting their actions. Still, she always put others before herself. And Dan Journal, chairman of the Lake County Republican Central Committee and 4th District Lake County Councilman, described her as a beacon for good government during her 30 years in the Senate. She was truly a great individual, said State Senator Ed Charbonneau from Valparaiso. He described her as one of the best in terms of how she treated people and how she calmly and quietly went about the business of representing her constituents in South Lake, Newton, Jasper, and Benton counties. She had a leadership quality about her that just always came through in whatever she did, he said. And then in a statement from Republican Governor Mike Pence at the time, he said he was deeply saddened to learn of her death, praised her many legislative accomplishments. He says she was a true public servant in every way. She focused on serving others from her um, honorary service in the military on behalf of the Hoosiers in Northwest Indiana, both local and state government. The First Lady and I offer our thoughts and prayers to her family, friends, and countless Hoosiers impacted by her work. 
State Senator Rick Niemeyer of Lowell, who replaced Lansky in the Senate after she chose not to run for re-election, said that her death is a loss for Northwest Indiana. He said, I had the pleasure of knowing Sue my entire adult life. She filled my father's seat in the Senate, in the State Senate when he stepped down to become a county commissioner. And she and I worked together closely during my time in the House of Representatives. She was a passionate champion in the State House for our area, and I'm saddened by her passing. Center Township Trustee Paul Bremer said, who knew Lansky for 35 years and worked on her campaign, campaigns, described her as an outstanding senator and a very dear friend. She worked extremely hard for her constituents and she will be dearly missed. And both Dernalk and Bremer said that Lansky was someone who could work with Hoosiers from both sides of the aisle. She was one of those people who brought people together, adding everybody that knew her knew that she would treat them fairly. And Senate President David Long from Fort Wayne had said, she remembers a woman of integrity, strength, and grace. Those of us who had the privilege of serving alongside Sue in the General Assembly appreciate her warmth, friendship, and wise counsel. On behalf of the entire Senate, I extend our deepest condolences to her family. She will be greatly missed. And then the congressional record, there was a tribute to her from uh, Todd Rakita in the House, Indiana House of Representatives. He says, Mr. Speaker, I rise today to honor State Senator Dorothy S. Sulansky, a woman who was fully committed and dedicated to public service for close to half of a century. She was known as a woman of warmth who gave indefatigably to those she represented and served. It was in the election law and administration capacity that I, as Indiana's 59th Secretary of State, worked most closely with her, particularly on Indiana's best in the nation photo ID at the polls law and the groundbreaking vote centers law. She was an excellent lawmaker and a good friend. And then we have two more quotes here from the obituaries, um, from the tributes I mean on the obituary page. Um, someone by the name of Edward Anderson, he says, My mother was one of the last women to get her wedding dress from Sue before she closed her dress shop and became a senator. My mother still has that dress. I was a Senate page for Sue back in 1990, my junior year of high school. She was the kindest and nicest person one could ever want to meet. Being a page for her was one of the greatest experiences of my life. She will be greatly missed and remembered very fondly. And then another woman by the name of Denise Moon writes, I've known Sue since I was about five years old, 37 years ago. She was always such a blessing to everyone she met. Sue let me stay at her place in Indianapolis so I could be a page for a day. I look forward to junior miss season at Hanover because that meant I got to spend more time with her. I lived in Indianapolis for a few years and she was my home away from home. Sue will be dearly missed. My thoughts and prayers to Bill and the family. So we actually have our final um, word of the day from Sue herself. People are staying here, they're moving here and staying here and becoming involved and putting down roots and that makes a difference. So it's up to us who know more of that, about that history to pass it on and make them aware of what's happened before and how far we've come and, and we're ready for the future too. But our future has to build on our past. Sue Lansky has left an amazing legacy for our community and the lives of the people um, that she touched and all these stories that we're sharing with you. So I thank you for coming out today. I'm going to end our, our formal presentation and then we will um, turn the camera on the audience so you guys can share your memories of Sue and we can honor her memory even just a little bit more. Okay, so thank you all for coming out today.